So looking at this side of the feeder house, there's some distinct differences on an X series versus the S series. First and foremost, you see this high torque variable speed drive. This is what you get on an X9. Now, we're gonna have all the power to run as big a heads as we wanna put on this combine, but we also get the fine tune adjustment of the variable speed. So especially on a corn head, going up and down by 10 RPM increments is really gonna help fine tune the specific speed to run for your conditions. Now, just like on an S series, we're gonna have our chain tensioners inside this little door here. So quick inspection in the morning, make sure, especially in that first 50 or so hours, as that chain breaks in and, and stretches a little bit, make sure you stay on top of this so your chain stays in alignment. Another key difference is in the single point connector, you'll notice nine pin. X9s are only gonna run nine pin. So if you've got 31 pin coming from an S series machine or coming from different years or models of headers, just make sure there's kits to convert the headers over to nine pin, uh, but just make sure if you are switching into an X series, you know everything's running nine pin now. Another key difference is right in here with the reverser. So with this X9, uh, header drive system, we can reverse with the separator engaged, uh, and that reverse is gonna be at a slow speed, high torque. What's also cool about this is you can do a slow refeed. So if you do uh, get a, a, a stop in the header or the feeder house, you can reverse that out, but then with full throttle, with the separator on, you can trickle feed that material back through piece by piece to pull. If you, if you got a big beaver hut or something, you can pull it apart and run it through the machine no problem instead of having to get out and dig it something out by hand. So one great benefit of this X-Series, both the reversing system and the slow trickle feedback in. Another thing unique to the X9 Combine is this red button here, and that's our hydraulic safety lockout. So if you are ever working on the header or working underneath the feeder house or the header, quick and easy, push that button, and the whole hydraulic system is locked out for safety purposes. This will also happen on its own, even if the button's pulled out, this will also happen if the operator is out of the seat. Uh, but just nice, whether you're a technician or working on your own machine, anything like that, have that peace of mind, push that button in, and then you'll see underneath, there'll be a, uh, a button underneath, and if you're seeing red, red is danger, Red means the head is able to move, but if, if you don't see that red cap poking out from the hydraulic cylinder, it means you're safe to work underneath the feeder house or the header. So when you look at the front of an X9, there's a very glaring difference here, and that is just the sheer width of the feeder house and how much crop that can intake. A 56 inch wide feeder house on an S series versus this 67 inch wide opening, we can handle a lot more crop and a lot more material. So when you're running your head, especially, I see this a lot when guys are setting their draper speed, you can benefit with a lot more capacity by actually slowing those draper belts down and feeding the full width of this feeder house. Left side goes into the left rotor, right side goes into the right rotor and maximizing the capacity of this machine. So it does benefit, especially with that variable speed feeder house drive to fine tune those settings, fine tune belt speeds, Get everything so it's utilizing the full area we have available on this X-Series. Another thing to note is our John Deere headers are able to be run on S-Series or X9 combines. All we have to do is change the kit that's on that faceplate of that header. So there's kit numbers, uh, so switching from nine pin to 31 pin or vice versa. And there's also some kits for the filler brackets to bring in that gap on S-Series or to widen it for X-Series. So regardless of the header you're running, you can make that conversion over to X9 or back to S either way, uh, quickly and easily through a John, with a John Deere header on the front. So what we've got here on the right side of the feeder house is our dust extraction fan. Now, this is really nice if you are in those dusty or dry conditions, it pulls a lot of that material into the feeder house and then ejects it out on the ground right here. So it keeps it out of your view, keeps your windows cleaner at the end of a long day. Just a nice feature to have when you're running these machines for a lot of hours throughout the day. You can turn this on or off right from the cab with a push button. Uh, and it's very easy to clean this system out too. So if you do 
have a lot of buildup, you're pulling in a lot of dust throughout the day, you can just pull this rod out, open this up, and just use your hand and wipe a lot of that clean and get back to running quickly and easily. Another thing to point out on this side is the feeder house chain speed. Now, depending on the model year of your X9, uh, this may look a little bit different, but same principle applies to X9 as it does to S. Uh, the, the sprocket here that you run will determine the chain speed. So on this machine, we've got the smaller sprockets. It's actually a dual 60 chain. Uh, we've got the bigger sprocket here that we can replace if we wanna speed that feeder chain up um, or replacements. You may have a sprocket that's got the large and the small on the same side where you just shift it back and forth to change that speed. But make sure you're setting that feeder chain speed appropriate to what your feed accelerator and your rotor speed are set to. We wanna keep crop flow consistent and smooth from the header all the way into the rotors. So we don't want a huge speed differential where there's a bottleneck going into the rotors or those rotors are pulling that material away too quickly. Um, so typically in our conditions here in Nebraska, if you're just running corn and soybeans, the smaller sprocket or the slow speed works very, very well for most conditions. Uh, if you're getting into other crops, say maybe a wheat with a higher rotor speed, that's where maybe you'd think about switching to the larger sprocket to speed that up. So another thing to remember on any combine, but X9 is included in that, is cleaning out the rock trap. Now, if you go by the book, the recommendation is doing that daily. But just remember, even if you're not in rocky conditions or even if you're cutting off the ground, like uh, harvesting corn, there's still gonna be material that fills that rock trap up. And as you run throughout the day in multiple days, that's gonna pack tighter and tighter and tighter. If you get that pack too tight, it's really not gonna serve as a safety precaution that it is. Um, if there is a foreign object that is ingested, you want that space in there for the feed accelerator to knock it into the rock trap and not ingest that object further. So keeping that clean, the recommend, recommendation is daily, but even if you forget, trying to do that at regular intervals is only gonna help you in the case of a foreign object ingestion.